In a previous video, I built my own blade server, but I didn't stop there. Not one, not two, not three, I built five. But why? What purpose do they serve? Why build five of these instead of spending the same money on one powerful machine? That question came up a lot in the comments and in this video we are going to answer it. We are going to explore concepts such as redundancy, high availability, clusters and horizontal scaling. We will also take a closer look at my home lab and later in the video find out a key change that these new blade servers will allow me to do. If you've ever had your entire home lab go down because of one failed part, you'll want to stick around. Let's start with a story. About 13 years ago, back in 2012, we renovated our house and I reserved space for my home lab in a closet. I installed some rack rails and for the first time I could host rack mounted hardware in my lab. After some research I decided to build an all-in-one box to run everything I needed. So I bought a rack case, a super micro motherboard, a Xeon CPU and some hard drives. It ran VMware ESXi with a virtual machine for FreeNOS which I later switched to TrueNOS. It also had a virtual machine for PFSense for firewalling and routing and a bunch of other virtual machines for websites, Minecraft servers and more. The configuration of this setup was a bit complex. For example, to get good performance in FreeNOS, I needed to pass through the PCIe disk controller hardware to that virtual machine. The PFSense machine used the two network ports on the motherboard, which also required some special configuration and drivers. I was quite satisfied with this box once it was up and running and it ran well for about three years. Then it broke down. I was thinking, great, an opportunity to rebuild with updated hardware. However, at that point in time I had a lot of other stuff going on, so I realized I could not find the time to do a full rebuild. Now, with all my services being offline, including the internet connection, it became a bit stressful and I needed a quick fix. The first thing I did was to buy a mini PC to run PFSense so I could get the internet back online. Then I did some troubleshooting of the all-in-one box and found that the motherboard was dead. As I mentioned, the setup of this this box was quite complex and I could not remember all the details and somehow I had not gotten around to documenting it. So to avoid spending time reconfiguring on new hardware, I wanted to get the exact same motherboard. After a lot of searching, I understood that this motherboard was obsolete and I can only find one supplier that had some left. The price was higher than more recent hardware, so I ended up overpaying for outdated hardware just to get it running again. After replacing the motherboard, the all-in-one box has continued to serve me well and I still have it running. But now I am going to repurpose it, which I will talk about later in this video. Now, later on at work, we started running containers and eventually moved to Kubernetes, which required more machines. And around that time, I watched a video about Google's data center. In that video, they showed custom blade computers powering their infrastructure. All of our racks don't really look like a traditional server rack. These are custom designed and built for Google so that we can optimize the servers for hyper-efficiency and high-performance computing. I thought, why not do the same, but on a much lower budget? So I ended up building low-budget blades to run the Kubernetes cluster. Fast forward to today, and I had a need to expand my home lab. With the experience of my all-in-one box breakdown, I decided to make my lab more robust. So I built the custom blade servers. So let's get back to the question, why build five of these? instead of one powerful machine. Well, because when that one machine fails, everything goes down. Your websites, your home automation, your Minecraft server for the kids, access to files on your NAS, all offline. And maybe you're on vacation, maybe the parts you need to fix it are out of stock. It can be a mess. For businesses, avoiding that kind of downtime is critical. For home labbers, it's just inconvenient, but still worth avoiding if you can. So what can we do to avoid it? To know that we need to understand two related concepts, redundancy and high availability. Redundancy means having more hardware than you need. High availability means that your system can automatically switch to that redundant hardware when something fails. To explain, I'll use RAID as an example. Most of you probably know RAID, redundant array of inexpensive disks, although these days they've rebranded it to independent disks but I'm sticking with the old version. 
For those of you that don't know RAID, it's a technology to keep your data safe in case of hard drive failures. Imagine you have one big hard drive storing all of your data. Everything works fine until that drive fails then your data is gone. Now imagine you have more drives than you need in a RAID setup. The same data is stored on multiple drives, so redundancy. You can also configure it so that if one drive fails, the others take over, which is high availability. Now let's apply that same logic to computers. Say you got one powerful machine running your entire home lab. Now imagine that machine failing, now your services are down. You're stuck until you fix it and that might take a long time. So what's the solution? Just like RAID uses multiple inexpensive disks, we can use multiple inexpensive computers. Now managing each machine separately would be a lot of work. So we want to configure them to work together as a single system. Just like the drives in a RAID setup can be managed as a single storage volume. For computers this is called a cluster. And each computer is called a node. We can also configure this so that if one node fails, the others take over. That's high availability. That's redundancy. It's RAID, but for computers. Let's call this setup Redundant Array of Inexpensive Nodes, or RAIN for short. I just made that acronym up, but hey, maybe it will catch on. Now, another reason for having many small computers is related to scaling. But what does that mean? Scaling simply means adding more of something. For example, if you're adding more RAM to your computer, then you're scaling up your RAM. If you're adding more drive to your RAID array, you're scaling up your drives. There are two main ways to scale hardware, vertical and horizontal. Vertical scaling is adding more hardware to the same machine, like adding more RAM, more drives or another CPU if it has an empty socket. It works well up to a point, but eventually you hit hardware limits. There are only so many RAM and CPU sockets on a motherboard. To solve this limitation, we can use horizontal scaling. In this type of scaling, instead of adding more hardware to a single computer, we add more computers. This is the approach I took. You can start with as little as two machines, and then you add more, and you will not hit any hardware limits. It's more flexible, more fault tolerant, and can be more cost effective in the long run. Think of vertical scaling as stacking Lego bricks to build a taller structure. Horizontal scaling is spreading them out to build a wider, more stable base. Now let's conclude with some final thoughts. With these new blade servers, I can make a key change in my home lab that I have wanted to do for a long time. Instead of having the all-in-one box run virtual machines, I will reconfigure it to a dedicated TrueNAS box. All the virtual machines and containers will be run on a cluster made up of the new blade servers. This means my lab will continue to run even if a machine fails. You may wonder exactly what I will install and how it will be done. Well, I have made another video about that which you can click here. In that video we will install the machines as a virtualization cluster. You may think the storage may still be a single point of failure. Well I will also go through several options for storage and show how to solve that. So click this video and I will see you there.